Well, hello, and welcome back to the Urban Pharmacy Podcast. This is Stacey Heine, your holistic nutritionist, plant-based coach, and lifestyle wellness mentor and host of this podcast. I'm really excited for you to be here today because I have a returning guest. It is Dr. Will Bolsowitz. We're going to be talking about gut health. Now, Will is a world-renowned gastroenterologist and New York Times bestseller, and he knows a thing or two about taking care of the gut microbiome. Now, the cool thing is that Dr. B actually has a new supplement for gut health, and it's coming out very soon or should be out maybe by the time that you're hearing this podcast. And you will hear all the details about it in this episode, but you're also going to hear about what Dr. B's life has been like as of late, and also what entrepreneur life is like for him. Uh, Before we go into a deep dive of all of this nerdy, awesome stuff for gut health, I want to remind you about my new favorite waterless skincare brand that I have been using for several months now. It's called Oliveda. And if you haven't looked into Waterless Beauty yet, I want this to be your sign to do so. So I want for you to go and look at your skincare products and see if the first ingredient in it is water. And if that is the case, just know that potentially it could be better. Meaning that there are skincare companies out there actually that are waterless and that they don't use water as the first ingredient, meaning you are spending less money on water and more money on active chemicals, plant chemicals that actually help your skin to look better. And that is what Oliveda is actually all about. And that is what I have been using. I have been using this skincare for several months. It's all based on the olive leaf elixir. So if you haven't gone to PubMed lately, which maybe you haven't, <laughs> it's, it's a medical database that you can go to and you can type in olive leaf extract or olive leaf benefits. And you are going to see a whole bunch of science behind this amazing constituent, this plant constituent called hydroxytyrosol and aloropin. And these plant constituents are so anti-inflammatory and they're packed with antioxidants that help your skin on so many levels. And I am just thrilled to have found this waterless beauty brand from Europe. It is safe. It's clean. It's highly effective. And I have been using multiple different products. Now, It's not just topical products that Oliveda has. There are also internal things that I have been quite obsessed with lately. And since we are here with Dr. B talking about gut health, I want to make sure you know about the gut health benefits of consuming olive leaf. So I have been drinking this adaptogenic mushroom coffee called Olive Mush, and it has ground olive leaf in it, plus adaptogenic mushrooms and chai spices. All of the ingredients in this adaptogenic coffee are highly anti-inflammatory and the, um, the olive leaf is really, really good for the gut. I've also been taking a camu camu olive leaf concentrate to help reduce inflammation, to reduce allergy symptoms and to help just gut motility, gut health and immune strength in general. So if you are in need of a clean waterless beauty brand, you haven't found your perfect match for your skin products yet, and you're looking to up-level your gut health and your immune function, look no further than Olive Tree People and the Oliveda products. I will link all of it down below. Dr. Will Bolswitz, welcome back to the Urban Pharmacy Podcast. I'm so excited to have you here. It's always a pleasure, Stacey. Thank you for having me. All right. So, I mean, we're going to talk about gut health because that is what you are an expert in. But since this is your third time on, I would like to just kind of catch up with what's happening in Will's life (laughs) and like as a real human being and not just the social media and gastroenterologist that you are. So what has happened? I want to ask you, I mean, I think maybe the second time you were on, you were maybe still in practice. I, I don't know. I lost track, but you left practicing in an office and treating patients. And now you're working with Zoe and doing your own entrepreneurial stuff. So 
what has life been like and what are you up to and tell us all that yeah. Will, how's how's will will's doing great um life is good and you know i would love to sort of like uh uh, fill in the gaps on this because um, my life is very busy and um, and yet it's very hard like when people ask me so what do you do it's a very basic question in the United States what do you do yeah. it's like actually kind of hard for me to answer this without like getting into an entire sort of story so okay. I think that the story is like basically you have to start with the launch of my first book fiber fueled which came out in May of 2020 I had zero expectations for this book of course I wanted it to be su successful but like I was launching in the pandemic and all the major podcasts like for example Rich Roll they all canceled on me because the pandemic hit and there was no way for people to travel mm -hmm. so basically I launched this like from my house on a phone and um, and it blew up and it was a completely unexpected success and the thing that I was not prepared for in any way is the amount of attention that actually came after the book came out. Mm -hmm. So I really kind of thought like, you know, you, you put like the, to me, the effort was before you. So like I was, yeah. you know, waking up at five in the morning and writing from five in the morning until I would go to work at seven 30 Then I would work from seven 30 until like five o'clock, come home, see my kids, have dinner, put them to bed and then write some more. And then on the weekends, like my wife and, and the kids would go to my in-laws house and I would, I would write all, all day, Saturday and Sunday. And I did that for five months. And um, so I, I, I really thought like I put in my time and effort and it's over. And it was not. And the uh, amount of attention was like great, but also quite overwhelming. Mm -hmm. So a lot of requests for interviews, obviously podcasts, but also like people calling the office that wanted to come and see me. Mm -hmm. It was hard because like my clinic in Charleston alone, where I live, was already very successful. I had a, I had a multi-month waiting list before the book even came out. And um, so anyway, nonetheless, um, all these things start happening. And I'm like increasingly feeling like, is this sustainable? Yeah. Not really seeing my kids. Yeah. And anyone who knows me, if you're meeting me for the first time, let me just be upfront and say this because you know this about me. I'm a very family oriented person. Yeah. I have three kids and actually here's an announcement. A fourth is on the way. Oh my God. Congratulations. So, um, so like we have this growing family and this is, this, this is my priority above all else, above books, above being a doctor. So anyway, I kind of felt like this is, this is becoming unsustainable. I'm, I'm working, you know, from five in the morning till 10 o'clock at night. I'm barely seeing my family and something has to give. Mm -hmm. And here are the choices. The choices are that you can choose to be a traditional medical doctor in a clinic. This was my dream from the time I was a teenager. And the alternative, which was never my dream or my intent, but yet is so amazing and exciting. The alternative choice is you can do things that impact millions of people. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and that's not just writing books. Right. And so I made the decision to give that a chance. I can always go back. Yeah, I made the decision to give that a chance. And so I left my practice in February of 22. Um, we had another baby, our third, Susie. She was born in April of 22. First girl, right? You had two, you had two boys. Uh, so okay. we are mostly girl family. So my oldest, she's oh, not. Okay. He's a girl. My okay. son is seven. And then, so I have one boy. And then my daughter, Suze, is a year and a half old now. And then we are expecting another girl in January. Oh my gosh. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so I had it flipped. So all the girls. Okay. I love it. <laughs> girls. Uh, and then my son gets a lot of special attention. So anyway, um, and then my second book, the fiber fields cookbook came out in May of 22. Mm -hmm. And so, so anyway, I left my practice and it was kind of honestly very hard for me. Yeah. Cause I left a world that I was completely comfortable. I had built my life around and I was good at what I did. Yeah. And I entered into a new world where I was going back. I, I, I joined the personalized nutrition company, Zoe, which is in the U.S. and the U.K. And I'm happy to dig into that more if you want me to. But I, I became their U.S. medical director. So I'm very high up. I'm on the executive. Like essentially like it's me and the vice presidents mm -hmm. and our CEO and we're all hanging out. Yeah. And um, 
So, and I'm very, very deeply involved in what they do, but I'm going back into the world of research. Mm -hmm. And this is something that I have a background in, mm -hmm. but I'm working with people who are elite. Yeah. Like these people are the best in the UK, mm -hmm. the best in Boston. Um, so there was a learning process for me. It was quite humbling. And um, anyway, fast forward to where we are today. Well, uh, let me tell you where I am today. So in, um, in the fall of 2023, I'm here. I'm working on my third book. There's nothing to, uh, to announce publicly about okay. this. I'll just leave it at that. I'm working on my third book as we speak. Um, Getting good at that. I mean, you're just going to start pumping them out like Dr. Furman, aren't you? <laughs> uh, I wish I could say that's true. It's very hard to do. Like it's like yeah, it, I, I was supposed to have my book submitted a year ago, and yeah. I'm like writing it now. So um, anyway, and um, I'm working on that. I Zoe has been been doing amazingly well. It's been a, such a fantastic opportunity because um, we now have like hundreds of thousands of people who have been a part of our personalized nutrition program. Mm -hmm. And not only are they getting the benefit from this, and we know, we know that they're benefiting from this because we have the data to back that up. And we ran a, a clinical trial to prove that our product works. Mm -hmm. Um, but also those people are participating in the world's largest personalized nutrition research study. And part so, of it. I, I, I'm totally part of it. So. And that's, and that's like amazing because it's like we can do things that help the individual person, but yet the individual person can do things by simply contributing their data to this research study. They're, they're right. basically helping us to figure out, you know, issues and questions and problems that other people are not working on. So a quick yeah. example of this, women's health. So women's health is not studied anywhere close mm -hmm. to the level that it should be studied. Right. And I say that in a way where I'm like restraining myself because it kind of pisses me off mm -hmm. because half the world are women and the other half the world, we love women right. and we want them to be healthy and happy. Right. And, um, so like we're digging into menopause mm -hmm. and we're digging into women's health issues. And that's, so this is all stuff that we're doing and it's really cool. Like today, I, I literally, before I came on this call, I just got an email that I'm a co-author on a paper that we're submitting to Nature Medicine which is literally the top journal on the planet. Yeah. Right. So, um, so is it different than what I was doing? Yes. Do I miss what I was doing? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Am I done doing what I was doing? No, I'm not. I'm going to, I'm going to have a clinic. I just need to get my book done. <laughs> yeah. And when that's done. I'll have, a, I'm going to basically reopen a clinic, but it's going to be like, uh, you know, specific to what I'm now doing and more restricted in terms of my time. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, so here we are. Wow. And you and I were chatting before this started. You, well, your wife is homeschooling the children, um, and that's awesome. So you are really able to be, be home with them more. And But, I mean, you're so busy and doing all the things. So your life has radically shifted, and... You also, Will, are creating a product as well that we're going to talk yes. about. So, yes, I have, a, I have a supplement company Yeah. that I've been working on for two and a half years. Um, that two and a half years has been focused on researching and developing, to me, the products that I always wished that I could have in my clinic for my patients. Mm-hmm. Because I feel like there's this um, gap that exists where people are not getting what they actually need. So yeah. like there's the pharmaceutical industry and they serve a purpose. I'm, I'm not here to bash them, but like, not, you know, they're, I think we would all agree pharma is not the right choice for all situations at all times. Right. Um, and food is a wonderful choice. And that of course is my top priority is trying to improve people's diets, mm -hmm. but food doesn't exist in this place where you need to do everything with food by itself. Right. To me, the optimal choice for human health is a food first approach that adds the right supplements and when appropriate and necessary, you layer in medicine. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And like that to me is what we should all be doing. And so um, the problem that I always had is that like I was patchworking it in the clinic 
in terms of giving people prebiotics, things that feed their microbiome, um, or patchworking it in the clinic to get the right probiotic for people. And um, and the the problem with that is even if you can find something that works, I there was no transparency. I, I never knew, like, is this fiber powder sprayed with glyphosate? Right. I don't know. Right. So, um, so to me, there was a need where there are, I know, a bazillion people out there who have these issues, and there's this need to fulfill what, they, what they're looking for, um, but doing it, doing it on a higher level, like so doing it on a level that's both transparent and simultaneously developed by a person with expertise, meaning me, using the best available science. Right. So here we are, and the company is called 38 Terra, T-E-R-A. So, and that, that name, it's, look, I'm a nerd. So Terra is another way of saying trillion, like mega, giga, Terra. Terra means trillion, 38 trillion. 38 trillion is the number of microbes that we have living inside of our gut. Right. So, um, and that's the name of the company. It's a, it's, a, it's a supplement company that's oriented towards the gut. And how do, we, how do we use the microbiome to benefit our entire body, not just in terms of gut health or digestion, but like broadly, our metabolism, you know, our mood, um, our cognition, our, our hormones. Like how do we optimize our immune system? How do we optimize all these things through the gut? So that's what the company is about. And our first product that we're going to be launching with is called Daily Microbiome Nutrition. Mm -hmm. um, we call it DMN01 for short. So Daily Microbiome Nutrition. And uh, this is a, like to me, this is the prebiotic powder that I always wish that I could have given to my patients. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you've gathered, well, and we're going to dig into this, and but you've gathered like, you've gathered so much information probably just outside of you in practice, but then you launched that gut health course. So you probably were like understanding so much more about what people really needed through that. And then your work with Zoe, and then you launched your book, which you had supplement recommendations in there. I'm sure you got tons of reviews and people asking you questions regarding that. So it's like, now you really see that problem you're able to then create something to really start helping people solve their gut issues. And this is so awesome. Like, do, have you like stepped back, Will? Because I mean, with, you know, we've created elderberry syrup. Um, it's, it's a small little company, but like, I know kind of what it's like to create a product and there's so much work behind it. Now, creating a gut health product, I'm sure is just, uh, very, very involved. And, um, but like, have you taken a step back and, and seen just done a little bit of reflection, reflection of how far you've come? Like you saw this problem, you knew that you really wanted to help people. And now you're literally about to, or are launching your own product. Have you thought about like how awesome that is? Um, I'm super proud of these things that I've been working on over the years because there's still a reflection of the uh, the person that I've always been and what I've always strived to do, which is like, you know, um, I was a bit of an idealistic kid. Mm -hmm. I thought that the world is supposed to work in a way that is like perfect and fair. I think as adults, we kind of see that's not necessarily true, but... But yet, like that idealism is what drives me to say, what can I do to try to help other people? And, um, and the practice of medicine was a, a, an expression of that. And then what I discovered along that path is that I could write books. And to me, like the ultimate form of communication is a book mm -hmm. because I spend all of my time for months on end meticulously choosing individual words that I want to pass to you. And you can spend a weekend like literally just a weekend consuming that and it could potentially change your life. Yeah. And so it's been amazing to go through that experience with my books and get the messages that I do from very, very generous people who want to share the benefits that they've received. And now, you know, to me along this sort of journey that I've been on that we're talking about today, um, it's like, 
you know, I sat there in my clinic back in 2014 and I was like, this fiber supplement sucks. Mm -hmm. It's the best I got, but this sucks. I wish I had better. Mm -hmm. right? And then you fast forward that to I'm writing fiber fueled and it's in the chapter. It's like literally I've written it. My perspective on this has not changed. Read the, you can read the chapter from 2020 where it's like, here are the benefits. This is why I believe in it, right? Here are the choices. But yet I'm sitting there and I'm like, we're still not where we need to be for these people. Mm -hmm. and so everyone's reaching out to me after reading that chapter and saying, okay, but Dr. B, which one do you recommend? Yeah, right. It, which How one exactly? What the, what's the brand? Where do I get it? Right. Yeah, what's the brand? What's the dose? Right. Like, which one do you recommend? And it's like, well, how can I in, in good faith, even if, even if I were to give you the same one that I've been recommending in the clinic since 2014, I've sat there in 2014 and thought to myself, this sucks. I wish we could do better. Mm -hmm. And so, um, so to me, it, it does feel good in a way to be able to apply those same skills, the education, the experience, all of that into creating a product and taking the time to not rush on it, taking the time, taking two and a half years to really like sit there and, and like, let's make a complete assessment. Like you would not believe how much research and science is out there, mm -hmm. you know, unless a person like spoon feeds it to you. Right. But when you, when you start like researching for the concept of a prebiotic, how do I make the best prebiotic possible? Oh my gosh. Like I found a ton of studies. Mm -hmm. And so I took the time to kind of go through them and then to cherry pick. Here are the, here are the things that I want to put into this product, literally from across the globe, from Africa, from Europe, from Australia, from the United States. Let me pick the best ingredients that I can possibly put together because they're backed by science and because I think that they're going to help people to feel better. Yeah. And so that's really cool. And I, I can't wait to put it out into the world because, um, because like the science, the science that's already there behind this says to me, this is going to be a game changer. Yeah. Well, it sounds really cool. I would like to kind of just go over ingredients. Um, this is, I also saw, like you were saying, this is certified glyphosate free, which is crucial. Um, you know, I see that you have potato, like potato starch in here, which I want to unpack. Um, but did you even know, like, well, you probably do now, but I didn't know the potatoes are one of those crops that are like really contaminated with glyphosate. Did you know that? Um, yeah, I think it's a soil issue and right. yeah. it just never clears. It just never, you know, and also like you can um, spray the surface and destroy all the, all the weeds. Right. Um, then it just so, seeps down in it. I just, I just didn't know. I don't know how I never connected that, but like potatoes have been found. I, I learned that from the glyphosate girl. Uh, when I had her on my podcast and she was explaining to me that potatoes are a big one that are contaminated. So anyways, that was a side note. I'm sorry. No, it's uh, okay. I, I, I think that, I think that consciousness and awareness to this, because the issue is that th this is what I often come back to. It disturbs me that our regulatory bodies do not require the placement of a label if a product was directly sprayed with glyphosate, let alone if it was grown in soil that was previously sprayed in glyph with glyphosate. Right. Like it, it disturbs me that we don't, we simply don't know whether or not that's true. Right. Um, and it's a strong argument in favor of organic in general. But like, if we could just answer that question, I think it would really help people in their choices when they go to the supermarket. Yeah. Yeah. So, and as organic farmers ourselves, like, you know, there's like a three, three year, um, you know, healing process of the land, if you will. And I just don't know if that's long enough it, anyways, um, to be certified organic. And there's just so much, so much that we need to know about our food system. We all just need to do a little bit more research and, um, okay. So anyway, I'm just going to go on a tangent. Let's talk about the ingredients in I, do I think you're talking about soil health. I think you're talking I about am. soil I'm going back to the soil health thing. Sorry. Yeah. And, and like, and like to me, and to me, this is like a, a broader vision of like one, one health, one ecosystem, one biome right. across the entire planet. Because like these are not, um, you can't separate these things. And yeah. when we, when we punish our environment, we ultimately are punishing ourselves. Right. Yeah. And so when we destroy our soil, why we need supplements? Why we need supplements? Well, <laughs> I, I I mean I I think that like 
there's an argument to that end because like for example stacy um i've tested magnesium levels on a bazillion patients mm. it almost it doesn't matter what dietary pattern you're following you can do everything you want to say oh we'll eat a plant-based diet you'll get magnesium whatever yeah we're just not getting enough magnesium from our diet it doesn't matter what dietary pattern you're following it's not specific mm. to that people are not getting enough magnesium why because if we don't have healthy soil filled with minerals, right, you can't transfer it into food. It's not possible. Yeah. I'm convinced that's also why people are so obsessed with these sodium supplements lately, these electrolyte things. It, you know, it's just really that goes back to the soil. Can we talk about that? Yes, please. I'm troubled by this. I don't. So I think that the issue from my perspective with this is that there are certain um uh, our body has a desire for certain specific things in our food. Mm -hmm. And this is evolved. And the reason why we evolved for this is because we were hunters and gatherers for 99.999% of human history. We didn't have organized agriculture. We didn't have the ability to like sprinkle salt on our food. Right, right. And you need salt. You need salt in order to live. Yep. Right. Just like for the majority of human history, we lived in uh, an environment where starvation was a very real possibility. Mm -hmm. And within that context, gram for gram, one gram of fat has nine calories, one gram of carbohydrate has four. Therefore, we would, it would make complete sense that you can get more than twice as many calories by pursuing fat. Now, I'm not saying fat is bad. What I'm saying is that we've now come to this place where there is there is a community of people who believe that if it feels good, it must be good. Right. And I don't think that's actually true. And there's far too many examples of things that feel really good that are, in fact, really bad mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and that we pay a price for. And if we're already over consuming salt, which we are, yeah. then how can the argument possibly be that we need more salt? It does not make sense to me. I. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I uh, totally agree. And there's so many people that are in my ecosystem that are practicing functional medicine and, you know, holistic healers, if you will. And everybody's talking about salt. I mean, these cell salts, these, these electrolyte drinks, I mean, it's just, but then you have to just take a step back and look everybody has too much salt. Most people in America are consuming too much. So how is it just that sodium is going to heal us? I think that there's other trace minerals that are potentially bound to these, you know, minerals that they're drinking in these sodium things that are potentially making them feel better. I just think it's great. It's crazy. It's, it's conceptually similar to me to colonics. I hope is it okay if I talk about that. Sure. Okay, cool. Uh, so it's conceptually similar to colonics. Mm -hmm. There are community people who say, I get a euphoric feeling after I do a colonic. I feel great. Right. right. Clean that colon out. And like, I get that. Right. I get a euphoric feeling when I drop a great dump. Right. <laughs> like, that's like a normal yeah. part of a healthy bowel movement. Yeah. Right. And when you flush out your colon, yes, you feel good. That doesn't mean that what you just did is actually good for you. Because what you're doing is flushing out your microbiome. Right. And it's very clear from the available research that when you flush out your microbiome, there's a healing period that your body requires in order to just recenter, just to mm -hmm. get back to where you were. Right. And if you're going for your weekly or twice weekly colonic, you're actually digging yourself deeper and deeper and deeper into a hole. And I think this is yet another example, no different than alcohol or cocaine or smoking, where there are plenty of things where in the short term you feel good. Like when I drink a salt beverage, do I enjoy the way that I feel? Yeah, I'm not denying that. Mm -hmm. It doesn't mean it's good for me. Yeah. It doesn't mean it's helping me to live longer with less disease. Yeah. And I think that that's the thing that we need to be careful about. Don't spring for the thing that makes you feel good in the short term when there are serious concerns from a health perspective that they're actually like holding you back in the long term. Yeah. I mean, it kind of even goes with, with the gut, and I, I know we've covered this before, we've talked about fiber in the first two episodes, like we really just talked all about fiber. And um, even for me, 
I don't want to get into my health thing. I could talk to you offline about that one. But like, I actually have worked with James and Dahlia um, recently because I had some gastroenteritis in January and holy moly, holy moly, have things not been fun with my gut and like histamine that I've never had before. Like all of these food things, it's just not fun. But um, a lot of people are out there um, avoiding fiber. Uh, because it doesn't feel good. Right. And even for me, like regular foods that just regular foods that I'm used to eating have been really uncomfortable for me. Um, and I have to kind of push through it. But a lot of people out there are just avoiding, they're just avoiding these foods. Um, and it's not helping them heal. Um, I feel like, you know, there has to be a little bit and not for all, but there's probably going to be a little bit of discomfort when it comes to healing. And it's just, it's the same with this loading up on the salt with the colonics. Like we have to really find the ways to heal. And um, so for me, like brown rice wasn't fun and only white rice was fun, like for my gut. Um, but I kind of pushed through it and now, you know, recolonized my gut with the proper bacteria that's helping break it down and it just is like a it's a process so anyway I guess that's a note for people out there who are healing sometimes you have to be a little bit uncomfortable in the process so hey before the show goes on I want to tell you about my favorite waterless beauty brand that I just recently found called Oliveda now this is a holistically driven beauty brand from Europe that has a 20 year tenure there and just came over to the United States as their direct to consumer model. So now I am able to share it. And so are other women who are passionate about the holistic living journey and sharing cleaner, safer options with their networks. Now, what I love so much about Oliveda is that it is based off of the olive leaf cell extract. So it is really potent in anti-inflammatory polyphenols that help your skin from within. There are internals that you can take. I'm taking the beauty molecule, the I-70 hyaluronic plus the Camu Camu olive leaf concentrate. And then every single morning, I'm either drinking the olive mush mushroom coffee that has adaptogens and chai spices, or I'm drinking the ground up olive leaf matcha tea, which is incredible for the gut, for the mind, and for your immune system as well. I'm also using all of the topical skincare products from Oliveda, including the corrective face line that has a beautiful cleansing oil or gel, a tonic, an awesome serum called the F59, Botox in a bottle, plant-based Botox, and then also the corrective cream and the corrective eye elixir and even the corrective eye cream. So I'm loving all of that. And I'm also using other things throughout the week, like the honey enzyme mask. And I just got the new SOS mask in case I have um, a breakout or blemish control mask. Um, and then I also got the AHA the hyaluronic acid, the vegan hyaluronic. I have all the different things. I have the green retinol. There are many different things that you can choose from, but what I suggest you do is just take the quiz. If you want to know what would be best for you with waterless beauty that is holistically driven from the inside out and outside in, it's from tree to beauty, just simply click down on the show notes and take the olive brain quiz. Because when you do and you purchase two of the items that are recommended, you'll get a free eye cream or eye elixir, which is a steal. So Grab my new favorite skincare brand at a discount with the free shipping of $50 orders for the United States and enjoy all of the Olive Tree People goods. You can get Oliveda, you can get Olive Mush, you can get LA Dope, which is a CBD skincare holistic brand, which I haven't even told you about yet, but all the goods are waiting below. So tap below to get your free eye cream and have fun. Okay. Have you heard of olive leaf and olive leaf extract for gut? Hydroxytyrosol. Uh huh. Or lorapin, the the phenolic compound. Have you heard about this? And there's actually a recent study. <laughs> I'm interrupting you. I'm no, sorry. No, it's... There's actually a recent study showing um, the benefits of hydroxytyrosol in olive oil, which it's not nearly as concentrated on in olive oil as it is in olive leaf. But even for like halting colon cancer, it's a new study. I'm not sure if you've seen that. Um, I'll totally send it to you, but have you heard of it? Because I've actually been drinking ground olive leaf and my gut, I mean, I'm feeling, I'm feeling well on it. So have you heard of that? So I haven't, I haven't, um, have I heard of olive leaf? Yes. Am I aware that there's olive leaf supplements, for example, out there? Yes. Mm -hmm. um, you know, in terms of the details of like specific studies, I don't recall them off the top of my head. I've probably come across them in, in, in my time of reviewing all these different things, but 
But I think what you're bringing up, though, is the concept of phytochemicals and specifically polyphenols that have been proven to be beneficial. Which are in, uh, it's in your product. So we'll well, and I, think that, and I think that that's a concept that may be a little bit new and different relative to fiber. So um, it's not the same as fiber, right. but it's actually, like to me, extremely exciting because um, if we think about, you know, I'm an advocate for consuming a diversity, a variety of plants. Mm -hmm. And part of this, you could say it's like eat the rainbow. If you think about these different colors, the colors come from somewhere. Mm -hmm. And yeah. it's these plant-based chemicals, specifically the polyphenols, that we would describe them as antioxidant compounds. In essence, that essentially means that it's reducing inflammation within your body. Mm -hmm. And what's really interesting and kind of new, Stacy, is that um, if you didn't have a microbiome, these polyphenols would be pretty darn close to worthless. Like you would get access to like 2% of them. Yeah. And it's the microbiome that powers these polyphenols to have their benefits throughout your body. So whether it be you know, the polyphenols that you find in olive leaf or in olive oil or resveratrol, which is a classic one that you find in, you know, red grapes or, or red wine or even peanuts. Mm -hmm. um, no matter what it is, they're unique, they're different, but they're beneficial. They're, they're, con they're consistently, I've never seen studies that say that they're not. Right. They're beneficial and we get access to them because of our gut microbes so the gut microbes are playing a critical part in our ability to um, get nutrition from our food mm -hmm. and so you have ligonberry as one of the ingredients that's in or ligonberry however you say it in your supplement and is that the same pretty much like the same thing that you're talking about in terms of these polyphenols is that why you chose that for your supplement so we, the, the supplement has seven different plant-based ingredients. Right. Each of the ingredients was selected for specific reasons. Mm -hmm. In some cases, it includes fiber and polyphenols or resistant starch and polyphenols. But in the case of the lingonberry, um, you know, let me just sort of paint a picture here. So think about classic berries that we love. Think about blueberries and raspberries and you know um you could even go like this time of year cranberries mm -hmm. all right and they have that bitterness to them right and that bitterness and those colors are the polyphenols mm -hmm. that are beneficial for your body and way up in the north in arctic forests in the north of finland they grow these berries these lingon berries completely naturally Mm -hmm. Now, if you were to go to Finland and like consume a normal Finnish diet, you would be completely familiar with these. These would be as common as blueberries. And you They're might. Yeah, I mean, I've seen the ligandberry jam at IKEA. Yeah, and you, <laughs> exactly. Well, because IKEA is, you know, it's a Swedish country, right? right. Or a Swedish yeah. Swedish company. So, but like you might, you know, in the same way that you might forage for mushrooms, you might on the weekend go and pluck some lingonberries and get a week's supply, right? And just pull them from the forest. And that's effectively what's happening here is that we have berries that are growing in these ideal uh, conditions to produce a very, very high level of polyphenols, completely naturally grown. This is not a field where things are growing. This is a forest where people are walking into the forest and they're coming out with lingonberries. That's how they're actually being harvested. Um, and there was a study that was done. The reason why we specifically went after lingonberry is not just the story of the forest up in Finland, but it's also that research has shown that this is actually the highest ORAC berry out there. Oh, is it? Even so, higher than Kamla? Um, it depends, like on, uh, so I've seen some studies that will show different, different scales, results. Different right? scales, yeah. So, so, some, so like, could you, you know, say, pull a different study and be like, oh, well, look at this one right here. Right. But the it's answer though there. is, well, the, you know, there's, each of these are great, right? Yeah, I mean, I think great. there's advantages to every single one of them, but the reason why we opted for this is that we wanted to get those very, very high levels of those polyphenols that are specifically known to exist in this particular type of berry that most of us don't, we just don't have access to. Yeah, those anthocyanins, those, those dark purples, and that's awesome. Okay, 
let's break um let's break down a few more ingredients well all of the ingredients just we'll keep it short i don't want to take too much of your time and then i have some popcorn gallery questions for you so okay we could just i'm sorry we've talked more about other things let's <laughs> stay focused on the supplement now green kiwi fruit i literally eat green green kiwi every day thanks to your book so i have that every single morning so you have that in your in your supplement New yep. Zealand green kiwi in particular. Yeah, it's a specific brand name too, which I think is important to point out. It's called Actizen. Mm -hmm. The reason mm -hmm. why this is important is it's not just any green kiwi powder. This is the green kiwi powder that has been clinically studied. So there's been a series of randomized controlled trials using this Actizen green kiwi product that have shown us what, it, what it's capable of doing for the human body. And what's really cool is that like um, if you read Fiber Fueled, I talk about how green kiwis, two key green kiwis a day right. can actually help to improve constipation. Right. And the truth is that taking this, even though it's in a small amount, 600 milligrams, mm -hmm. taking this product has actually been demonstrated to be clinically equivalent to doing that. That's awesome. So, and in addition, they, so they studied it, it improves bowel habits. So whether you have diarrhea or have constipation it helps to bring you back to the middle. Um, the other thing is that it improves the microbiome. So it has this prebiotic effect. There's a specific family of bacteria that are universally accepted as being beneficial to us as humans. And they're called fecal bacterium. Yeah, I see. This, pro this, this particular product, Actizen, has been demonstrated in studies to increase fecal, fecal bacterium levels significantly. Hmm. So the other thing is that this is um, a little bit unique to green kiwi fruit. It has digestive enzymes uh, are like, a natural occurring yeah. part of the food. Yeah. And those get transferred. They're actually detectable within the, the, the supplement powder is these digestive enzymes are actually coming along for the ride. That's awesome. So what we're getting is we're getting fiber. We're getting polyphenols. We're getting digestive enzymes. And all of these things combine together to give us the, the clinical benefits of improving our bowel movements, of reducing digestive symptoms, making it easier for us to enjoy the food that we enjoy, and also enhancing our gut microbiome. Awesome. Now, potato. This is another starch that's in the supplement. Why did you choose potato? Okay. This is like, to me, the hero ingredient, that this and the act is in. Um, so this is called Solnul, S-O-L-N-U-L. All right now, after I talk about this, a lot of people are going to like be like, "Well, where can I get this?" Yeah. And and the answer is, I'm not really aware of where else you're going to get it other than the product, Daily Microbiome oh, Nutrition. Awesome. Um, although, like, we're, we don't have exclusivity, but like, I don't think you can just like buy a package of Solanol and take this by itself. Mm -hmm. So, resistant starch is amazing mm -hmm. because it's conceptually similar to fiber. The difference is that it actually even more efficiently gets transformed into short chain fatty acids like butyrate. Mm -hmm. So it's even easier for the body to take this resistant starch and then prepare the anti-inflammatory molecules that we're ultimately striving to get. Mm -hmm. um, most of us are wildly deficient in resistant starch. So it's not just we're deficient in fiber, we're also deficient in resistant starch, which is part of what we're addressing here. Mm -hmm. You think of the potato, and we have to relieve, relieve ourselves of the concept of a potato being boring or unhealthy or not good for us. Within that potato is this unique type of resistant starch called RS2. Mm -hmm. And using this particular product, again, like the product is important because we're using the verified product that was used in human clinical trials at specific doses. We're using it at that exact dose. Mm -hmm. When you take 3.5 grams of this solenol, it's going to not only, much like the actizen, improve your bowel movements, it's going to reduce your digestive symptoms, but it has a slightly a different effect on the gut microbiome that's like complementary to what you're getting from the actizen. Mm. In this case, you're increasing levels of acromantia by over 300%, increasing levels of bifidobacteria by over 300%. These are categorically recognized as probiotic bacteria. In fact, um, there are these new probiotics, they call them gen generation two or next generation. 
probiotics that are starting to come to market now. Okay. So like you could go and you could buy an Acromancia probiotic. Mm. And the benefits of Acromancia are that it's good for digestive problems like irritable bowel syndrome. It's good for immune problems like uh, inflammatory bowel disease. Mm -hmm. And it's good for metabolic problems, so like obesity and diabetes. And finally, it's good for the gut barrier. Mm -hmm. So it helps to reverse leaky gut. Amazing. And um, so you could go and buy a probiotic, but I say, why would you take a probiotic that's foreign to your body that probably you're just going to poop it out mm -hmm. when you could just feed the acromancia that lives inside of you right now? Because we all have it. Mm -hmm. and it just needs to be fed. And here is their food, the solenoid. Yeah. Now, there's one last thing that I want to mention about this because I think it, it's – you know, I think you're going to love this because it's specific to some of the things that you mentioned a moment ago with related to your own sort of digestive health struggles. So you mentioned histamine issues. Yeah. Okay. So I wrote a, a book, my cookbook mm -hmm. is like, to me, one of my goals was to make it the go-to resource for histamine intolerance. Um, that chapter alone has over 80 references. I'm not aware of any other book that's like digging into this topic as deeply as I did. The problem, though, with histamine intolerance is that the dietary approach, although like important, it's not easy. Mm -hmm. no. It's really hard. Mm -hmm. And like you've experienced this, you know. Yeah, for sure. So a natural question is like, is there a drug to help me? And the answer is no. Mm -hmm. And then the second question is, is there a supplement to help me? And the answer is, yeah, kind of. There is a supplement that you can get um, that's derived from the kidneys of pigs. Mm -hmm. And it's rather debatable whether or not it helps. Okay. Some people it helps, and if it helps, I support it, as long as you're as long as you're comfortable with the cost and the fact of where it's being sourced from. Right. Okay. But like, there's really not many other options to lower blood histamine levels until this. So Solnol just had a study that was published literally in the last, I think, three months, four months, where they basically demonstrated in humans in a clinical trial. That solenol lowers blood histamine levels. Wow. And they asked the question, why? How does this work? And I love what they found. Because what they found is not like activating an enzyme or replacing an enzyme. Um, what they found is that it, it restores the gut barrier. And when you restore the gut barrier, you are preventing leaky gut one of the consequences of leaky gut is that histamine that's in your diet and in, inside the tube of your intestines yeah. can leak into your bloodstream right. and then give you symptoms. Yeah. And so if we could repair the gut, you can repair the problem. Right. And that is the best way to fix this. Yeah. So, so this, is more, this is more effective, Will, than eating cooked and cooled potatoes. Well, so cooked and cooled potatoes are a different type of resistant starch. So you can't, you actually can't, there's different yeah, types of It's not RS2. It's not RS2. Okay. So I believe that's RS4. So okay. the benefits that we're talking about are the benefits that you get. Like I, we know for a fact that you get these benefits from this particular product, Solnol, because we have human clinical trials to prove it. Amazing. Amazing. So cool. Okay. Now, Baobab, what's that? Okay, so baobab is paired with acacia in this yep. product. Yep. They come together. Okay. These are two specific plant foods that exist in Africa. And they're ancestral in origin. So if you were to study, for example, the Hadza, which are the people that live in Tanzania, baobab is a very important part of their diet. All right, so in, in a way where we are like, bring it back these ancestral sources of fiber that come from a, Africa. Is it a root? Uh, no, it's uh, like a fruit. It's, oh, it's a fruit. Okay. Yep. So, um, whereas the acacia comes from a tree. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So, um, but the other thing that's important about this is not like to me, the argument isn't just, uh, you know, ancestral. I mean, I think that's interesting, mm -hmm. but it's also that these are low FODMAP. Mm -hmm. So, 
resistant the 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 potato starch, the actizin, the uh, baobab, and the acacia powder. These are all low FODMAP sources of fiber. Mm -hmm. So, what does that mean? Well, that means that if you're the type of person who has digestive health problems and you're just trying to feel better, you can actually, like I've already told you the impact that this product is going to have on your gut. We've talked about this. You know, we have human clinical trials to show this. But the beauty of it is, is that like what you described when you ate brown rice where you felt like crap, mm -hmm. like we don't have to go there with our, our supplement. We don't right. have to suffer. We don't have to be bloated and miserable. Like you can have a supplement that is gentle on your gut, yet simultaneously is packing 150% of the punch that you're looking for in terms of healing. And so that's, that's sort of like to me a core concept that we have here is like if I were to define in one sentence what it is that makes my product different and special, it's that it's going to be gentle on your gut, but it's going to give you all the benefits in terms of gut health. Mm -hmm. It's awesome. And mango, mango was actually something like when I was doing um, mangoes and other ingredients in here in, in your supplement um, that I felt fine with uh, histamine wise and like bloating wise and FODMAP wise, I guess. Um, why did you choose Australian mango to be in this? Well, so we wanted we wanted to showcase different types of polyphenols mm -hmm. from across the from across the globe. And um, so in Australia, they're, they're actually quite proud of the mangoes that they produce there locally. There's many different varieties of mangoes. I don't know if you've ever. Oh, have yeah, you ever I've tried lots of different mangoes from Florida. They're so good. The what? The Florida mangoes you said? Okay, so like uh, many of the mangoes that are produced in the United States are oh, produced yeah. in Florida. Oh, right. Yeah. Um, much like you can get like a Harry and David box of pears. Right. Those are, those are good. Yeah. They're good too. Yeah. You can get. Uh, there's 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 farms mango farms where they'll send you a box of mangoes, mm -hmm. and they'll give you like a, you know six different varieties. Right. And so we had this experience this year, our family, where like these mangoes came. It was so fun. That's fun. Because they're delicious. Yeah. And and we had like six different varieties and like two of each. So you just like sit down with the family. Like, well, we're gonna try this one now. We're gonna try this one now. Yeah. So anyway, but the point with mango is that any person who's had a mango, you can conceive that it's this beautiful, luscious orange color, delicious flavor, and part of what you're getting there are the polyphenols. Mm -hmm. So much like with the lingonberry that we're looking for those anthocyanins, mm -hmm. there's specific types of polyphenols that are found within mango, and that's what we're going for here to provide. Got it. And then lastly, beetroot. Yeah, and, and beetroot is a story much like the mango and the, and the lingonberry of the polyphenols. But the other thing that's unique about, about beetroot is that we actually know that whether it be beetroot powder or, or beet juice, that there are actually unique benefits in terms of the nitrates that are released within your body. Right. So, and these nitrates help to relax blood vessels. And that can have a number of different benefits. So like uh, as an example, like improving blood flow is good for exercise. So extra, so like, for example, runners might drink beet juice prior to going on a run and notice improvement. Right. Um, but yet also there's this kind of fun concept that beetroot or beet consumption might be good for erectile dysfunction, which of oh, course, totally. any, yeah. any guy that should be something that, you know. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I just wrote a newsletter yesterday about beets and the fact that there's those naturally occurring nitrates and how it helps with vasodilation. And that helps with so many different things. And so I feel like that's probably going to be good for people's energy as well, um, just as a natural, you know, byproduct of that nitric oxide. Um, yeah. That's awesome. Those beets, those beets are being sourced from Poland. So, like, if you think about it, we're kind of, like, going around the globe here because we have the, the potatoes from the United States, lingonberry from Finland. We have uh, the beetroot from, from Poland. We have two products, the baobab and acacia, which are from different places within Africa. And then we have the mango from Australia and finally the um, the kiwi from New Zealand. Awesome. So good. And uh, can children take this? That's, that's kind of like one of my popcorn questions. Uh, people were just, somebody was asking as we kind of move toward the end and get into these really quick popcorn gallery questions. Somebody said, should everyone take a probiotic inc including kids? And will this be good for kids, this supplement in particular? 
So the, the, the supplement I developed specifically for adults, the research yeah. studies that we have are specific for adults. So I can't sit here and make a promise that if you give this to a child, that it's going to have the exact same effect in children. Mm -hmm. um, as I've said before, and I'll say it again right now, to me, it's like we have to start with diet. Mm -hmm. And like with our kids, for example, like this needs to be a huge priority because I think that the average diet the kids are consuming in the United States is appalling. Yeah. Um, and it's sad that you go to a restaurant and like the choices are basically chicken fingers and, and macaroni and cheese and pizza. I grew up on right? that. Yep. yep. So, I mean, I grew up in the 80s. So like I was grew growing up drinking Kool-Aid and eating Cool Ranch Doritos all day. That was my life. So, but anyway, like I, I think that that's where we need to start. Is, is a child going to be harmed by consuming this product? No, I don't think they would be harmed in any way. Could you give this to a child to consume? Yes, you could. Um, uh, also, my wife who's pregnant, she said, can I consume this 110%? There's no contraindication to using it. Yeah, yeah. All just plants. It's just therapeutic dosages, which is so important. Um, okay, so how do you, uh, this, sorry, Will, this is very random, but how do you have any tips on um, how to heal a hiatal, hiatal hernia? Ooh. Okay, yeah, yeah. So hiatal hernia, this is extremely common. Um, mm -hmm. About one in three people have this. They can come in varying size, sizes. Let's talk for a moment about like what's happening because it's an anatomical change. Mm -hmm. So, and I think that's an important part for people to understand. Like this isn't some sort of functional change. It's actually the anatomy that's different. Mm -hmm. So if we were to uh, take a deep breath in together, if everyone at home could do that with me, take a deep breath in. And what you're going to feel is your diaphragm is actually pulling down. All right. And it's expanding your lungs and pulling as much air into your lungs as possible. And that diaphragm is a muscle that obviously every single time we take a breath, it's moving up and down. And it's actually a very, very important part of our barrier to acid reflux. Mm -hmm. So the diaphragm has this place where it pinches the bottom of the esophagus every single time you take a breath. And what we want in a perfect world, the way that our anatomy was strategically designed by a higher power, <laughs> is that we want the bottom of the esophagus, which is, there's a, a sphincter muscle there. So it's like I a circular muscle. Sphincter, right? Yep. So you want that sphincter muscle, the lower esophageal sphincter, to basically line up with the diaphragm so that they're basically at the exact same level. And when they are at the same level, then basically our esophagus is in our chest our stomach is in our abdomen and our lower esophageal sphincter is right in between mm -hmm. perfectly placed at the level of the diaphragm. And that is the perfect barrier to acid reflux because they can actually like the lower esophageal sphincter and the diaphragm are working as a team. Mm. What happens when you have a, a hiatal hernia is the stomach is actually pushing up into the chest. Mm -hmm. It could be a small amount or it could be a large amount. Um, so, but that's what a hernia is when something is pushing into a space that it's not supposed to be, we call it a hernia. And so the problem with this is if the stomach is pushing up then that means that the lower esophage esophageal sphincter is also moving up mm -hmm. and you create a separation, uh, where the lower esophageal sphincter is now above the diaphragm that's pinching. And that, that separation of the two creates a pocket in between them. That's problematic. So not only have you separated these two things, but now they're actually competing with one another mm -hmm. and potentially creating a problem for one another. And that leads to reflux. For the vast majority of people, they can't feel a hernia or know that they have a hernia unless they have a test to see if there's a hernia there. Um, in very, very, very rare cases that, by the way, happen uh, in the vast majority of uh, in the vast majority of the time when this happens, it's an older older woman. But like in very rare cases, you can have like for example, the stomach getting twisted, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and that's that is that's a very scary problem. It needs to be dealt with immediately, and that that can be an emergency, and it often requires surgery. Okay, and that person they may have abdominal pain and nausea and vomiting and things like this. For the average person. If you have a hiatal hernia, you have reflux. Now, that was a uh, like you know eight minute introduction to me answering your question rather efficiently, because the question was like how do we fix a hiatal hernia? And the problem is it's an anatomical change. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's possible that if you could inc if you could reduce the pressure within your abdomen, because there mm -hmm. is a pressure within that abdomen, if you could reduce that pressure, then it may actually reduce the pushing up of the stomach into the into the chest. 
Yeah. And so, um, so weight loss can be beneficial in that particular context. Um, that being said, like I've had plenty of skinny people who also get hydrohernia. So it's not just a weight thing. Yeah, definitely helped my husband to lose weight, but, um, and now he doesn't suffer with that anymore, but I know this particular person is not overweight. So any recommendations for her or for that person, those people that are not overweight and dealing with this? So you're probably dealing with symptoms. Those symptoms are typically acid reflux type symptoms. It could be regurgitation, heartburn, um, sour taste in the back of the throat. And so the way that we approach this, there's a couple things that are really important here. Medication can be a part of the deal here, but let's not make medication the entire deal because that's mm -hmm. what most doctors are doing these days. Let's, let's uh, work in a couple of lifestyle elements here. So one is we want gravity to be on our side. What I mean by that is that when you lay down flat, that's actually problematic because now gravity can like just have st stuff sit in your esophagus. So we want an empty stomach when we go to bed. This means early dinner time and then a hard and fast rule. Nothing after that other than like water, herbal tea, tea, something like that. That's okay. You can do that. But no alcohol and no food after dinner time. That way when you go to bed with an empty stomach, you can prop up your bed and you may find that that's helpful. Mm -hmm. Usually using pillows alone are not going to get that done. Usually the pillows, you just crick your neck, but you don't actually prop your chest. You need to actually prop your chest if you want this to work. So usually a wedge underneath the mattress is what's necessary in order to really accomplish that effect. Um, from, a, from a nutritional perspective, the classic uh, stuff that we would say is like all the fun stuff is problematic. <laughs> so that means um, chocolate, mm -hmm. peppermint, and fatty foods and fried foods and alcohol and cigarettes, all of these things, spicy stuff, hot sauce, acidic stuff like citrus, all of these things can exacerbate your reflux. Here's where I go further. Uh, I'm a fan of fiber. So adding a fiber supplement has actually been demonstrated to be as effective as medication. A high fiber Mediterranean diet, it was not a vegan diet, but it was quite close because it was a plant predominant Mediterranean diet. Mm -hmm. A high fiber Mediterranean diet, also as effective as medication. Wow. And then last but not least, there was a study where they said if you could eliminate caffeine and eliminate alcohol and replace it with water, you will improve your reflux. Okay. Got it. Thank you for that. Um, I know we're really going... Yeah. Uh, Stacey, I have a course, by the way, on that topic. Like, so I have multiple courses that I teach on. on oh yeah, you have a heartburn course. I have a heartburn course. So yeah. it, people who are interested, like that, that to me is like a, you know, that was a five minute primer. Right. And if that's all you need, awesome. I'm happy that you're better. That's that. That's the main thing. Um, but for those of you who that's just not simply enough, if you want to take a deeper dive and like spend hours studying this topic with me, then that's where my course comes in. Awesome. Thanks for that. Any tips on somebody that wants to uh, treat H. pylori without antibiotics? Uh, really hard to do. That's really hard to do because I think you're going to drive yourself crazy in the process of doing it. And I, I'm worried that it could actually cause harm because you would say, I'm not going to take antibiotics, but I will take antimicrobials. Well, antimicrobials is synonymous with antibiotics. Right, it's just, right. So to me, if, if it needs to go, it needs to go. Just get it done and then restore your microbiome afterwards. Focus on that. Yeah. And that brings me to kind of the next question ish, like, but this is for a toddler, but it's, I'm sure it's probably similar for everybody. Uh, well, will your supplement, or is there a particular supplement that you recommend? We've covered this on past podcasts, but after antibiotics, what can they do to repopulate? Would your supplement be something that would be helpful for that, um, for their gut to repopulate? Do they need to just take, take just probiotics? Uh, what are your suggestions there? Yeah, it's, it's, so it's a bit of a, a complex topic. Um, I'll tell you the stuff that, I, that we do know for a fact that I think um, we can lean into. So I think, that, first of all, there's studies that show that if you're already on a high fiber diet, it, then the antibiotics cause less harm because your starting point is higher. Mm. Right? So you're digging yourself into less of a deep hole because you're starting at a higher point. But also by staying on a high fiber diet, 
you are supporting your gut throughout the process. So even though those antibiotics are causing harm, you're simultaneously lifting up. Mm -hmm. All right. So what we want is we want to be on a high fiber diet, ideally before, ideally during, and ideally after, in order to achieve, uh, uh, in order to reconstitute our microbiome and get it back to where we want it to be. The fiber, the supplement, daily microbiome nutrition, 100%. Like, you know, we have talked about how this replaces the fiber. This helps you to achieve the adequate amount of fiber, which 95% of us are not accomplishing, to accomplish the right amount of resistant starch, which the vast majority of us are not accomplishing, um, and also the polyphenols. So yes, I do think that it could play a role. I, it would not be a replacement for diet. It would be in addition to, in addition to diet. That's why it's a supplement. Now, the probiotic question is interesting. There was a study out of Israel a few years ago, and they actually looked at the effect of probiotics after antibiotics. And what they found was that people who took probiotics actually delayed the recovery mm. of the microbiome. Yeah, I remember So that. in a way, those probiotics are actually slowing down your body's natural ability to heal. Mm-hmm. That doesn't mean that there's no role. It just means that in the majority of cases, I don't actually use them. Okay. The role of probiotics would be that if you're someone who's had, if you've had a C. diff infection before, mm-hmm. then you want to protect yourself from getting a C. diff infection again. Mm-hmm. And that's what the probiotics do. Right. And in that case, I would do it. Okay. Thank you. Um, what do you think about somebody who has an IgA defi- deficiency and gets sores in their mouth? Do you think that these new like colostrum things, have you seen that? The new like people taking colostrum, do you think that that would help? I mean, I know that there can be benefits to fermented dairy. So yes, what do you so think I've, about been, I've been, I've been hearing about this, that adults are taking colostrum. Yeah. Um, I am clearly a huge believer in breast milk for babies for as long as possible. Um, and not not restricting that to a certain time frame. Like to me, like some people say six months or 12 months and then stop. Like to me, I say go as long as possible. As long as possible, yeah. So like uh, I'm proud of the fact that my kids have all received breast milk for more than a year after their birth. Mm-hmm. That, that's something I'm proud of in our family. And clearly like this uh, colostrum and breast milk are um, beneficial to babies. There is no There is no doubt about that. But then applying that concept to adults, just don't know. I haven't I haven't seen research to say that it's actually doing anything of benefit. Um, so it's and also like it's not human milk that you're receiving, right? So we're taking the cow the cow milk, and then like assuming that you're going to get the same benefits. Yeah, like mm-hmm. I think it's quite clear that consuming cow's milk is not the same as a baby consuming milk from the mom's breast. Right. Yeah. So I think we just need to be careful about making all these assumptions and believing that it's somehow going to do something. You know, to me, what I come back to is like when there's, when there's doubt, when you're not really sure what the truth is, let's lean into the things that are facts. So like as an example, like what, are you better off taking colostrum with no data or for example, using the daily microbiome nutrition that has multiple randomized control studies of humans mm-hmm. to show you what it does. Mm-hmm. And if the desired effect is to improve your leaky gut and improve your microbiome, I've already shown you, I have human clinical trials that it does that. Mm-hmm. So that's where I would just lean into what we know. Thank you for that. Um, somebody just asked, you know, she said, what's the best regu- uh, supplement for regularity? Uh, would it be a colon cleanse or fiber supplement? And I was like, well, tell me more. Are you talking about frequency of bowel movements? Are you talking about bulk? Are you talking about have not having complete evacuation? And she's like, well, I guess all three. And I think that we've covered that today. Your supplement will probably help all of those. I think it would. Um, again, like there's something unique about the actas and kiwi fruit that's specifically good for constipation. But it's interesting because people who had diarrhea also helped to normalize yeah. with that. It's like an adaptogen. Like kiwi's like an adaptogen. It's like, you know, it's like tackling. It just meets you where you need to be it's met. It's like an adaptogen for your gut. And it's also, but like, that's also um, a characteristic of fiber and resistant starch, which is that um, the only way to get both diarrhea and constipation back to the middle is with these products, right? So anything else is going to push you 
in one direction or the other. Right. You take anti-diarrheal, it can constipate you. You take something for constipation, it can give you diarrhea, right? So the advantage of starting with a fiber first approach is that you can work your way back towards the middle and see if this gets you to where you want to go. There are full disclosure, and I think this is just part of like, you know, uh, trying to get people better because that's really what I want. Um, if you have constipation and it's moderate or severe, a fiber supplement by itself is, pr or even a high fiber diet is probably not going to get the job done. Mm -hmm. And so that's where to me, pairing the fiber, it doesn't mean that the fiber has no value. Clearly fiber has value well beyond our bowel movements. Mm -hmm. um, but pairing the fiber with, for example, magnesium. Mm -hmm. And the types of magnesium that are, because there's many different forms and some of them don't help you poop. Magnesium citrate, magnesium sulfate, magnesium oxide. Those are the ones that are good for pooping if you have constipation. Mm -hmm. They work conceptually similar to Miralax. Mm -hmm. If you have kidney issues, don't do this. Um, I do encourage people, get your blood checked with your doctor. You can check your magnesium level. Odds are it's low. Almost everyone is low. Mm -hmm. we, we mentioned that at the beginning of the show. You add this in, it helps you poop. You have good relief, uh, good evacuations. And if you repeat your magnesium level with your doctor, you probably will find it to be now in the normal range. And that to me is like, this is why supplements exist. You can normalize your magnesium levels, get the nutrition that your body is missing, and simultaneously get your body into a better rhythm when it comes to your bowel movements. Thank you. Um, that's all. Those are all the questions. <laughs> After an hour and 15 minutes, I feel like I've asked you so many things. So, um, Will, you're, you're about to make big moves. You're working on another book. You have a supplement now that's getting out to the world. You say you're going to start another practice. Is there anything else that you want to share that's going on in Will's life or that we should expect to come from you? Or is there anything that we haven't touched on today that you want to share with the world? Maybe even just the message of hope. Um, so I guess I... Let me take the opportunity first to say for people who are interested in learning more about what we're doing at 38 Terra, mm -hmm. just come to our website, 38terra, T-E-R-A dot com. Um, and depending on when this podcast drops, you may be able to catch the new release of the, of the Daily Microbiome Nutrition product. And so I get in early um, or... Uh, you may be able to join the wait list and we have thousands of people on the wait list. We're yeah. very excited about that. Um, so along the lines of 30 Terra, we're not just going to be this prebiotic supplement. Our second product is already very, very far along in the development process and it will be coming soon too. And just as a teaser, I'm more than happy to come on and talk more about it when the time comes and I can reveal more. Um, but just as a teaser, um, I've been frustrated for a long time that there are the, uh, these two specific things that have an entire world of evidence to show that they are good for people. And if you want to get them, you have to buy them individually. And not only is that expensive, but it's inconvenient and it's not properly delivered to your body in the way that it's supposed to work. Mm. And so what I've done, again, this is a process I've been working on for two and a half years um, and it required a tremendous amount of research and development to get there. But we have developed a product where we can now combine these into a special capsule technology that will then release all of it into your gut in the way that it's intended to help people who have digestive symptoms or want to support their gut with wow. better gut. So, um, so that's coming and that would be probably early 24. Okay. Um, okay. Okay. Let me go back though to um, the, off the opportunity that you offered me, which is to say something. <sighs> the world is a crazy place right now. <laughs> um, and it makes me really sad to be completely honest with you. Um, and, you know, and uh, as, a, as a parent, as a father of three, soon to be four, I like I worry about what it looks like in the future. Yet at the same time, 
Um, I want to remind people that if you spend too much time on social media or reading the traditional media, it's just quite scary. And I think that's like sort of part of it. It's horrible for your gut. Horrible. Yeah. Horrible for your gut. Um, Stress is not good for your gut ever. So, um, and I think that like a part of this is like the fact that algorithms are designed to trigger us. Mm -hmm. Right. Like if I, if I just give you good science, scientific information, I don't get, people don't engage with that. Mm -hmm. Right. So algorithms are designed to trigger us. And also like media is now designed to get our clicks, Mm -hmm. which is also triggering us. I just want you, I just want to encourage everyone. Let's get back to being human and experiencing that authentically. And if we think about what really matters, what really matters is not on our phone or on a screen or on a device. Um, what really matters is connection to other human beings. That's where we um, find fulfillment and happiness and joy. And part of that, like for me, that's my family. But also it can be like friendships, like people with you, like, like, like with you, Stacey, like friends, like friends like you Aww. who I've known for years. Yeah. And um, so I think that, you know, what I would really say to people is in hard times, actually put down the phone and double and triple and quadruple down on eye contact Mm -hmm. and connection and loving on other humans. And it will help you to get past those tough times. Such a good way to end. Great, great note. Great inspirational pep talk there will <laughs> thank you and thanks for all of the information today as always it was thorough and in depth and will help so many people so i just want to t- tell you how excited i am for you um and congratulations on this new brand and all the things that are to come and thank you so much for healing um so many of us it's just a gift and we are thankful for it. So thanks for being on again and we will see you maybe next time. Thank you so much, Stacey. And thank you everyone for hanging with us today and and being a part of this conversation.